Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. So um, over the years, I've uh, come across uh, quite a few um, unusual cabbage anatomies, and I thought I'd share a few uh, with everyone today. Okay, first case. Um, this is a 60-year-old uh, woman uh, with a history of cabbage uh, at an outside hospital. The uh, cabbage anatomy is unknown to us. Uh, she presented to us with angina, and her nuclear stress test showed anterior ischemia. So here is the lima. And most of the time, the lima goes to the LED, and that seems to be the case um, from this view. It looks like maybe a small distal LED uh, with a lot of uh, competitive flow uh, from the native uh, vessel. But um, from this orientation, the lima to the LED graft is starting to look a little off. Uh, it almost seems like it goes to the wrong part of the heart, again, with pretty robust uh, competitive flow. Uh, I'll let you stare at it uh, a little bit. All right, but here is the LED. It's completely occluded. Uh, there is no competitive flow. So where the heck did the lima go to? And where was that competitive flow uh, coming from? So um, I did a, a simultaneous injection of the lima and of the RCA. And uh, here, uh, take a close look at it. So yes, it looks like the lima was actually anastomosed to the RV marginal branch. And the, uh, competitive, uh, the competitive flow that we saw was the brisk flow uh, coming into the RV marginal branch via the widely patent proximal RCA. This is quite unusual. I must say that it is the first time I've ever seen a lima anastomosed uh, to the RV marginal branch. So we next did uh, simultaneous LED and RCA injections, um, and you see the uh, CTO there uh, in the mid-LED. And um, after some discussion with the patient and his uh, cardiologist, uh, we eventually decided to attempt a staged uh, CTO PCI of the uh, mid-LED, uh, which uh, fortunately went well uh, a, a couple of weeks uh, later. All right, um, on to case two. Um, this is a 70-year-old man uh, with uh, cabbage a couple of years ago. Uh, he is quite active and fit, uh, but lately started having uh, angina while uh, splitting, uh, splitting wood. Uh, his uh, stress test uh, shows uh, anterior ischemia. His cath uh, showed that both of his SVGs were patent, uh, but here is uh, his lima. It is also, in fact, patent. Uh, but goes to something uh, truly uh, unusual. Uh, here is uh, his uh, native LED. Uh, there is a stenosis uh, beyond that large diagonal, uh, but if you look carefully at the LED, uh, there is uh, no uh, competitive flow. So um, as you might have already suspected, uh, this lima is anastomose uh, to a vein and uh, to actually the great cardiac vein. Um, there is uh, no uh, communication uh, with the LED. And uh, you'll also see that there is a severe uh, stenosis uh, in his uh, coronary sinus. So um, FFR of the LED uh, turned out to be positive, and he eventually underwent OCT-guided PCI of the LED uh, with a quite nice result, as you can see here. And um, after doing a right heart cath to make sure that there wasn't significant um, left to right shunting or uh, pulmonary hypertension, uh, we decided to leave the lima alone. And um, for those of you who are interested, I actually go over this case in more detail uh, in the video on um, un unusual lima anastomosis uh, on, on this channel. Okay, case three. Um, so this is an 80-year-old uh, man uh, with cabbage about 20 years ago uh, who came to us because of a troponin elevation after uh, he presented with a rapid AFib uh, in the setting of uh, pneumonia. 
Well, uh, here's his calf, and uh, on uh, his uh, calf, it looks like the lima, well, it looks like it just goes to uh, spaghetti. So I tried to lay things out a little bit better. Um, here is another view of the lima. So um, as it turns out, uh, this was a very intricately constructed lima. It was a lima four-way Y-graph uh, with a limb that goes to D1 and D2 and a second limb that goes to D3 and a very uh, diminutive uh, LED. And really remarkable that everything is still open after 20 years, especially with that small LED. Uh, th this patient did fine. He did not require PCI and uh, that troponin elevation was attributed to uh, demand ischemia. All right, um, final case. Um, this is a 60-year-old woman uh, who had angina and lateral ischemia on her uh, nuclear stress test. Uh, she had cabbage about 15 years ago. So on cath, you can see that the RCA is subtotally occluded at its ostium, and uh, you can see a faint shadow uh, of a stent in the mid-RCA, uh, which uh, seems uh, patent. And here I engaged uh, the uh, graph marker for the, uh, for the vein graph to the right, and it sure looks a little odd. And here's the same graph from the uh, RAO uh, orientation. The SVG is actually anastomosed to the proximal RCA, probably one of the shortest graphs that I've ever seen, uh, but it does uh, effectively bypass that stenosis at the ostium of the RCA. So it might be short, but uh, as long as it does the job, uh, we're all good. This patient did fine. Uh, she had a, a stenosis in the uh, distal circumflex uh, that we elected to manage uh, medically. All right, so the main take home message today is that, well, um, uh, you know, cardiac surgery is tough. Unintentional things can happen uh, even with the most experienced surgeons. And as most subscribers uh, of this channel are well aware, uh, PCI is definitely not uh, immune uh, to the occasional craziness. Uh, it really is truly remarkable uh, what our uh, cardiac surgical colleagues can do. And I have nothing but the tremendous respect and admiration uh, for their uh, skill and um, amazing uh, expertise. Thank you for watching.